Hello and welcome to Waycross Community Media's production of Dakota West Firebirds vs. Wenton Wood Warriors. Here on senior night at Wenton Woods, we will watch a epic battle between two teams with a storied rivalry. I'm Jimmy Love and this is my partner in crime, Nick Caudill, and we are indeed very excited about this matchup tonight. We've got a 4-11 Wenton Woods team. Um, and a five and seven Lakota West team, both streaking in very different directions. Wynwood Warriors on a three game win streak, three and one at home, but as I mentioned, a four and 11 record overall. Lakota West on a three game losing streak, so trying to end that streak. They are five and seven overall, four and three in conference, and one and three on the road. This rivalry, as we all know, dates back over a decade, so we should expect to see a lot of intensity. And without any further ado, let's join into the national anthem. Play our national anthem. Give a big Wynn Woods welcome to our visitors, Lakota West. Lakota West is led by head coach Matt Brooks, assisted by Mike Anderson and Bubba Walters. The starting lineups: number three, Chase Kaiser; number five, Keon Tillman; number ten, let's welcome Keegan Fish. Number 12, Jacob Beal. And number 42, Mitch Weber. For your Winton Woods Warriors, led by head coach Donnie Gillespie, assisted by Harry Phillips, Gary Lumpkin, and Charles Hudson. The starting lineup is number zero, Peone Dabuku. A freshman, number 22, Terry Durham. A senior, number 11, Jeffrey Savage. Another senior, number 20, Kevin Austin. And a senior, here we number one. Let's welcome Austin Jones. starting lineups for these uh, two great teams. Adam Jones, the star player for Winton Woods. It's a senior last home game. He uh, stands tall at six foot eight. I'd like to see a lot of performance out of him tonight. And I'm excited to see Keegan Fish, number 10 for Lakota West. He's a starter and he's only a freshman. 5'11 guard, weighing in at 165. Excited to see how he controls the pace of this game. All right, Austin Jones with the tip off. Already making his mark on this game. And the uh, first Wynton Woods possession ends in a travel. 
as Keon Tillman finds Keegan Fish in the backcourt. Keegan, a very energetic point guard for Lakota West. That'd be Mitch Weber out there on the perimeter and a little trouble with the dribble as Wynton Woods takes the ball over and oh. right back at them. Keon Tillman under the basket and with a beautiful under the rim layup. Savage almost had that turnover but ended up losing it, which cost his team points. Keep him over here, Jay. It'd be Austin with the ball. He's gonna put, the, put it up. It's just in and out around the hoop. And the first foul of the game, or was that out of bounds? That would be not a foul. That was a out of bounds on Linton Woods. They've got a West inbounding, and Keegan Fish back in the backcourt. He's quick to run a play as Lakota West passes around the perimeter. Mitch Weber. Chase Kaiser, and that was Mitch Weber on the three, unable to convert, but gets his own board, goes up and fouled, shooting two. Mitch Weber. They're gonna call that on number 22, it was Terry Durham. And you can see on the replay, Sticking your hands up in an innocent fashion does not always present the, prevent the ref from making that call. So two fouls, two free throws here for Mitch Weber. And the first one's good. Dakota West off to a fiery three point lead here in the beginning of this quarter. Oh. Witten Woods cheerleading efforts, unable to prevent that one from dropping as Mitch Weber drains both of his free throws. And that's Keegan Fish with the energetic defense, resulting in almost a turnover. And we have a hard collision right here by the scorer's table. Kevin Austin crashing hard into the uh, scorer's table. Here's a replay of that. You didn't want to see that anyway. <laughs> Keegan Fish with the ball in the backcourt. Keon Tillman now. Looking for his man, Chase Kaiser. Back to Mitch Weber and a turnover. Number 11 with the steal, that'll be Jeff Savage. And fouled before the shot. Fouled on the floor by Lakota West's Chase Kaiser. That is his first foul. Deems first. Great inbound play, but unable to convert as Keon Tillman comes down with the rebound. Keegan the fish man finds Jacob Beal. Ooh, Mitch Weber. Just got a finger on it, did Austin Jones. Unable to finish Keegan Fish though. Wow. <laughs> Great roll in and Keegan Fish using that energy and turning it into points. Jeff Just Savage. An exciting player to watch. Been watching him all year. Excited to commentate his game for the first time. Jeff Savage with the ball. He's going to take the shot for three off the glass and oh, in. Oh, the bank is open for the Whitten Wood Warrior varsity team. Both teams getting good bounces here to start off the game. And another one off the glass. Anything you can do, I can do better, Jacob Beal says. He must have been next in line. Smart play to keep the possession. And Lakota West makes more. We're going to take another look at Lakota's three here. Jacob Beal, not necessarily open, kind of making his own shot as that dribbles around the rim and rolls in. And Lakota West putting in a lot of pressure, starting off in this full court defense. They're lobbying for it, but they're not gonna get it. And I will, at the next available moment, I'll give you the players for Lakota West, because four actually subbed in during that last. Going just tripped up by Lakota West. That would be Chase Kaiser. He hits and the ground hard. <laughs> That's Chase Kaiser's second foul as Mitch Weber looks to move in. Chase. Yep, Chase Kaiser with two fouls, looking upset as he comes to the bench. Did not think the first one was on him. 
to be Jacob Goins with the ball at the top of the half. Guarded by Tyreek Price. And great defense there. Mitch Wynn leading to the turnover, but unable to keep the ball. It's a miss by number 23, Watson. And this time, Jack Wynn gets the rebound and keeps possession. Move it! Move it! Frank Schmidt. Number 23, Watson going to the ground. Jump ball. Frank Schmidt unable to maintain control. Dakota's ball. And possession arrows in favor of the Lakota West Firebirds as they'll inbound from the baseline. A bit of confusion at the scorer's table, but that was, in fact, jump ball as they flip the possession arrow. And Mitch Weber oh, a shows up. block by Austin Jones. Takes like a hard gonna... hit, though. They're going to call him for it. And he, he is ringed up. So Mitch Weber goes to the line for two on a strong move. Let's see the replay of that. It's going to be hard uh, to jump Looks like over. he got a little bit of ball and a little bit of body. So it's going to be hard to jump over Austin Jones. Big boy. Weber makes his first. in a quiet 11-3 lead here for Lakota West. Weber looking very slick from the line, and Lakota West quick to go right back into their full court press. Certainly the made free throw helps that. It's Jacob Goins taking the shot off the glass. Tyreek Price got burnt but got back in position. That's the Boyku with the rebound and two point shot. Mitch Weber, top of the key. And wide open, decides to take a look. And unlucky roll around the rim as Wittenwood comes down with that rebound. That'd be Jacob Goins taking the ball again. Looking for his man. That's Deboiku, who finds Great outlet Austin pass. underneath. Fantastic outlet pass as Woods looks to claw back a little bit. 12-7 now. With 3.35 left in the quarter. That's Dante Jones, senior. And a great block. Jack Wynn unable to finish. Number 23 gets chops it up to Austin Jones, who, is who draws a foul. He's going to go into the line to shoot two. And that was Mitch Weber's first foul. That's a 6'5 junior with his first. Jacob Beal, Keon Tillman, and Jalon Staples all check in for the Cuddle West. Austin Jones' second shot is up and off the rim. Great board there from Jacob Beal. Dishes out to Nail Mighty. Nail. Jacob Beal having a little bit of control issues, but does maintain possession. Mitch Weber thought about it, drove to the hoop, unable to finish, but a great move. And Zach Exelis coming up with that rebound. Spin move, unable to finish. Looks like it's uh, off Zach Exelis' hand. It'll be Firebird's ball. Chase Kaiser with two fouls, checking in, and Mitch Weber checking out. Jacob Beal in a little bit of double team and makes a very good heads up play there. Deflecting it off Linton Wood's knee and making sure his team maintains possession. He had nowhere to go going through the double team. The head coach for Lakota West, Matt Brooks, 
asking his players to provide a little bit more help and not corner his own, not corner their man, but uh, turning the ball over. That'll be Deboiku. Oh, he is fouled hard. Jacob Beal with the body. Wynn Woods will be shooting too. His first shot. Up and in. And Devontae Ross checking in for Chase Kaiser. Still has two fouls. And Jack Wynn, I was also checking in. Deboiku's second shot. Buttery smooth from Deboiku. Lando his, Lakes, buttery smooth right there. He's helped his team get back in this game. It's only a three-point deficit. Both teams finding a way to get on a run here early as an offensive foul, an illegal block from Devontae Ross. A little bit of confusion as the foul was actually on Lakota West. So it'll be Winton Woods basketball. Black called, Black 33, um, Devontae Ross was called an illegal screen. A lot of confusion as the presumption was Winton Woods had the foul, uh, including Winton Woods players. So the officials talking this one out, trying to get to the bottom of that. Here comes the replay here. Um, mm. yep. Yeah, it looks like it was an illegal screen. He was... Number 33, not able to keep his stance. Yep, stuck his knee out there just a little bit. Here just we can take a look at his... Uh, so right there. Yeah, you can't do that. That's a body check. So that was a good call by the official. We're not playing ice hockey. The ball goes to Wynton Woods. <laughs> oh, the ball pass. goes into the band. I don't think they saw that coming. No, that, that keeps them awake. Um, Lakota West, Jack Wynn finding Jacob Beal, dribbles it up the backcourt, dishing it off to Nail. Keon Tillman under a lot of duress, but dribbles through it oh. and turns the ball over, but gets it right back. And the ref quick to call a jump ball before that skirmish got any uglier. And the possession arrow will be in favor of the Winton Woods Warriors. Hey, Jacob Goins coming up the court, covered tightly. It's Keon Tillman in coverage. Jacob Goins finds Deboiku. We have a timeout from Winton Woods. I'm going to slow it down and think about it. Winton Woods with the 30 second timeout as the scoring has slowed to a crawl the last minute or two. Lakota West still up 12 to 9. After an 11 3 run, the Warriors are now on a 6 1 run, so responding with a little streak of their own. As this crowd of two to three hundred sits around restlessly, eager for this timeout to end. <laughs> Jacob Goins. Oh. When they pick it up, that's going to be Firebird ball. So, Wynn Sloppy Woods, play by Jacob Goins. I have a feeling that was not the play that the coach called during the timeout. I can almost see their drawing board from here, and I don't see that on it. <laughs> Jacob Beal finds Devontae Ross.
Beal back to Ross. That's Nail. Lots of perimeter movement. Winton Woods Un covering very well. Unable to break the shell of the Winton Woods defense. They're a stingy bunch. It's Jack Wynn back to Jacob Beal. Devontae Ross finds a, finds a oh. shot and takes it. 25 seconds left in the first quarter. And an important basket for Lakota West at the end their scoring draft. Mr. Boyku for two. And it's in it. And as we approach the 10 second march, Lakota West slimming it down a little bit, sees a lane and makes a great drive to draw the foul. It is on the floor though. We're gonna see the replay here. Here we go, and definitely a foul there. Got a little bit more than the ball. But not being a shooting foul means Lakota West needs to draw up and set a play here in just a couple seconds. I don't think that's it. Maybe it is. Oh, Brick, recover shot. Did he get it off in time? I think he did, but does not drop. And that would end the first quarter. Lakota West 15, Winton Wood Warriors 11. This has been a production of Waycross Community Media, and we'll be right back after this. I began producing and volunteering for Waycross when I was in the seventh grade. Since then, I have produced many programs that have won awards on the local, regional, and even national level. Waycross Media was the ideal place for me. I just got involved in, you know, as I say, as a hobby and continued on from there. Anyone with a message that they want to share should come to Waycross, take the classes, and produce their own television show. The Ohio High School Athletic Association is about sports, that's obvious. But it's more than just a competition. What we're really about is learning. Young men and young women stretching themselves in pursuit of the ideals that will guide them for a lifetime. It is an important mission and we share it with schools, families, and communities. As commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, I look forward to working with you to help our young people build their futures. Dakota West is inbounding the ball to start the second quarter. And Mitch Weber finds starting point guard Keegan Fish, who's back in the game. And oh, a near strip by number 22, uh, Terry Durham. Feel able to maintain possession as he finds Keegan Fish again. Dakota West trying to break the pressure. And Keegan Fish just off the back of the rim. Great board there from Chase Kaiser. Looks like it's going to be Winton Woods' ball. Able to hold their ground. Made a very sloppy attempt at a pass and went right out of bounds. So inbounds to number two, Jacob Goins. Tightly covered. They're going to put a double team on him. Funny. And it pays off as Keegan Fish's pressure results in a turnover, but Lakota West quick to return the favor as they give the ball right back to Winton Wood Warriors. Jacob. Jacob Goins was feeling the heat of these Firebirds. Indubitably. Back to Jacob Goins. We'll give it another shot. And now this one may pay off. Transition three, but the Firebirds get back in time to get that board as Keon Tillman comes down with it, immediately finds Keegan Fish. Ball energy out there, I tell you what. Oh, a strong block by number 22, Terry Durham. That was Mitch Weber going up a very, very clean block. Fortunately for Lakota West, able to keep possession. Jacob Beal on the attempt. You got three Winton Woods players on the court and one trying to score on the other end. Oh, hard foul. For some reason they found the need to foul. That was Jacob Beal's second. I'm not sure that would be 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get a second look at this block because this is a thing of beauty right here. Clean all ball. Mashed him right into the backboard. And the crowd was getting into a frenzy until Lakota West got the ball right back and kind of deflated their energy. But Tyreek Price checking back in as well as Devontae Ross as we see Keon Toman exit. That's number 22, Terry Durham at the line. Shot is good. Trap, watch trap. Keegan Fish finding Tyreek Price, making some Over. shifty moves, Wouldn't trying to set close. something up, and the shiftiness resulting in a turnover as a couple players are on some very different pages for Lakota S, as uh, they are also seeing their lead drop to just two. Deboiku comes in the game for. Kevin Austin on the Winton Woods Warriors. Jacob Goins will bring the ball up. Tightly covered, but shakes his man. He's going to dish it out to number 12, who is Jalen Lumpkin. Easy call for the official there as Austin Jones gets a little bit too cute and drags that pivot foot. Firewoods ball. Keegan Fish. Aquaman does a little. <laughs> looks up, does not pay attention to what he's doing, and an unfortunate double dribble for Aquaman. Here it is right here. Look at the two hands, and he dribbled, and he knew right away that you can't do that. Woods ball. Wide open for the shot. It's Jacob Goins is going to. Oh, to the scorer's table. The ball and goes. He's got a little piece of that ball. So Most uh, action we've seen all night over here. Just got a compliment on my reflexes from the uh, announcer here at Winton Woods High School for uh, saving him from the devastation of that ball. Destroying our expensive equipment here at Waycross Community Media. But emergency averted as Winton Woods inbounds. That'll be awesome. Jones with the ball underneath the hoop. Great defense, but better offense for Winton Woods. We could have let slowing it down here a little bit. That's Frank Schmidt. Finding Tyreek Price, who then dishes it to Chase Kaiser. Kaiser back to Price. Price looking for a lane. And Lakota West not happy with what they're seeing, so head coach for the Firebirds, Matt Rooks, calls a timeout. That's the team's first. Well, we got it all tied up here at 15 points with five minutes left in the first half. Winton Woods really wants to win tonight for senior night in front of their parents and fans. And Coach Galepsi will do what he can to make that happen. Both teams with four timeouts. Warriors with three fouls. Firebirds with 16 fouls. Definitely something to keep an eye on as uh, one more Firebird foul, of course, take the Winton Wood Warriors to a one and one. <laughs> Devontae Ross on the inbound pass, finding Tyreek, uh, excuse me, finding Frank Schmidt. Covered by Jacob Goins. Mitch Weber trying to make his own play, but absolutely oh. stuffed. Strong block by Austin Jones, a 6 8 senior from Winton Woods. Who's the man with the ball? This is about three point oh. shot. Good for number 23. This crowd is fired up. For the first time tonight, Winton Wood Warriors take a lead. Devontae Ross on the travel. And all of a sudden, Winwoods with all the momentum. Here's, Here's that 
rattling three-pointer. Clemeen Watson on the three-point shot. And he lets the fans know. <laughs> A late foul call there on the floor. That would be Frank Schmidt. And that's that foul I was talking about. That would put Winton Woods at the line on the front end of a one and one. Jacob Goyen unable to make his first. Coach Gluck showing some Dakota confusion West on the sideline. A little bit lucky there as the score rang the buzzer for a substitution. Opposite, Jacob Beal makes a wild the triple team causes pass. the Firebirds to throw it into the stands. All they knew is he just didn't want the ball anymore. And Jacob Beal checks out, and our boy Nail Madi is checking in. Frank Schmidt putting in a lot of pressure here. Jacob Goins trying to use his shiftiness. He'll find Austin Jones at the top. He'll send it back to Deboyke, back to, back to Goins. Mitch Weber with the foul there. Well, Maiden Watson driving hard at the basket. Check out a replay here as he goes up, and that's a lot of arm and not a lot of ball. Easy call for the official. And that was Terry Durham hitting the floor very hard. And now he'll, now he'll, uh, he'll come to the line to take a free throw. That's what they're called, right? I believe so. The FT makes the first. And Mitchell Weber checks out as Devontae Ross enters the game with the Firebirds. And Terry Durham unable to make a second shot. Dakota West will recover the ball. There's an important rebound there for Devontae Ross. Deboiku. Frank Schmidt now, top of the key. Finds Jack Wynn, back to Devontae, who thinks about making a pass under the hoop. Thinks twice. Keon Tillman slowing things down just a little bit. He knows his team's in a little bit of a scoring drought now. Would like an easy basket. Winton Woods has other plans. I hope their Deion plan is to shoot over Austin Jones. And a beautiful drive to the basket. Devontae Ross. I got to bite my tongue. That was his man. Beautiful kiss off the glass there. Found the lucky roll, and that's what Lakota needed. They're going to call traveling on number 23, Clemaine Watson. Here's a replay of that. And One, took, a little, took a little stutter step there before dribbling. Jack Wynn in down in the ball to Nail. Austin Jones Move defending. Will be Devon pulled off by Deboiku. Keon Tillman finding Devontae Ross again. And for the West looking for their man. Another travel. So back to back turnovers on the traveling front. Boyku to inbound. Both teams. Looks like his pivot foot dragged a little bit there. Coach Galepsi frustrated with the Boyku not getting the pass in before the substitution would be made. That is Nail on defense. Jacob, Jacob Goins is bringing the ball up. He's going to fight for Main Watson. 
Stack of coins at the top. And he's going to take it all the way down and off the glass and in. Great move. Whitten Woods starting to pull away. Strong move, as they are indeed. Now up four. Keon Tillman to Jack Wynn, finding Frank Schmidt. Devontae Ross saying his name a lot. Frank Schmidt, and speaking of Devontae, nothing but glass there, though. That'll be uh, rebounded by Zach Exelis, number three for Wynton Woods. Taken down by Fulmaine Watson. He's going to draw the block. Nail Madi was looking to draw an offensive foul there, but ref thought otherwise. And that'll be his first foul. 5'10", junior guard. For whatever it's worth, he looked pretty set to me. Meanwhile, Chase Kaiser, Tyreek Price, and Dante Jones check in. Dante Jones, first time we've seen him in this game. Wayne Senior. Ma Wayne Watson off the glass and in for his first shot. Oh. A substitution, Kevin Austin coming in for number one, Austin Jones. Yeah. Yeah, the second shot is good by number 23. Colleen Watson. Pardon me, Colleen Watson. The other 23, Nayil Madi in the backcourt. And the other 23, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Who doesn't want that number? Hey, for those UC fans, the other 23, Sean Kilpatrick. So, <laughs> it's a popular number. I will probably give Michael Jordan credit for starting that trend. The uh, disservice to give that to anybody else. <laughs> Tyreek Price, back to Nayil. Dante Jones, lots of perimeter play, but not able to crack the zone defense of Wynn Woods. Forty-five seconds left in the quarter. by number two. And a good foul there by Dante Jones as he prevents an easy bucket and instead will make Winton Woods earn their two baskets as they are now in double bonus. A little less pressure on the first now that the Lakota West Firebirds up to 10 fouls. Jacob Goins will go to the line, his first shot. Up and off the rim. Jacob Beal and Jack Wynn check in. Presumably for their offensive prowess as Dakota West will have 34 seconds to try and cut into this seven point deficit. Jacob going second shot, good. Jacob Beal out to Devontae Ross. Lakota West looking content at just passing around the perimeter, trying to get a last shot, which will likely be occurring very shortly. Puts it up just in time, oh. and he makes it. Nail Maji for three as time expires. Count the and basket. That's great to go into the locker room with that kind of momentum. That is exactly correct. Look at us cutting into that deficit. Look, look at us, Vibert's 20. Litton Woods Warriors 24. And we'll catch you guys after half. Hi, I'm Jerry Lucas. Everybody knows that high school sports give us excitement. They also give us leaders and role models, and they bring our communities together. Sometimes they give us heroes, other times they give us heartbreak. But they always give us an opportunity to learn, grow, and practice life skills. 
I know high school sports gave me a lot while growing up in Ohio, just as they do for today's young people. So shouldn't we give high school sports our full support? We thank you for sharing these fine athletes with us. At this time, we'd like to introduce our seniors. Naila Bomar. Naila is escorted by her mother, her aunt, sisters, and grandfather. This is Naila's second year as a cheerleader in Wynton Woods. She plans to attend Clark Atlanta University to study nursing and become a neonatal nurse. Naila Bomar. Sierra Cheatham, escorted by her parents and brother, Jarese and Quan Cheatham, and Chris Williams, her brother. This is her fourth year as a cheerleader at Wenton Woods. She plans to attend the University of Akron to major in business administration and minor in fabric merchandising to become a buyer or general manager. Sierra Cheatham. Kiera Meyer, escorted by her parents and sister. This is her fourth year as a cheerleader at Wenton Woods. She's a member of the student council and she plans to attend the University of Cincinnati to major in business and minor in fine arts. Let's give our cheerleaders a big hand. This is the color guard, Monique Medeiros. Jada Wakefield, escorted by her mom, brother, and grandfather. Andrea, Stephanie, and Sabina. This is Jada's second year as a member of the Color Guard. She is also a student council president and a member of the Varsity Ensemble, Key Club, and Women's Leading Tomorrow. Jada plans to attend college and major in biochemical engineering. Let's give our color guard girls a big hand. The boys basketball. Brennan Wilson. Brennan has been a manager for four years and he's escorted by Rodriguez and Alice Mack. He is also a member of the football team and he plans to attend the University of Cincinnati with an undecided major. Kevin Austin, escorted by his parents and sister, Kevin, Kimberly, and Camille and Austin. This is Kevin's fourth year as a Wentonwood High School basketball team. He is also a member of the band, and he plans to attend Ohio Northern University to major in mechanical engineering. Kevin Austin. Austin Jones. Escorted by his parents and brother, Martin and Angela, Brand and family and friends. This is Kevin's, or Austin's fourth year on the Winton Woods basketball team. He is also in the marching band, the symphonic band. He plans to attend college and major in marketing and journalism to become a sports journalist. Austin Jones. Jeffrey Savage, escorted by his mother and father, Jeffrey Savage Sr. This is Jeff's fourth year on the Winton Woods basketball team, and he plans to attend prep school next year. Jeffrey Savage. Tajay Kappel is a member of the pep band 
Varsity Ensemble, the Acapella and Drama Club, plans to attend the University of Dayton for music education. Dana Dawson, escorted by her parents and friend Linda and David Dawson, and Ashlea George. This is Dana's third year with the pep band. She is also a member of the band, choir, and yearbook. She plans to attend Eastern Kentucky University majoring in graphic design. Sarah Dean, escorted by her mother and brother, Sheila, Lonnie, Deshaun, and Samuel Dean. This is her fourth year with the pep band. She is also a symphonic and marching band. She's in the National Honor Society, a student ambassador, and a member of the golf team. She plans to attend Miami University or Xavier to study biological sciences. Sarah Dean. Tiffany Duchette, escorted by her grandparents, Don and Judy Beaver. This is Tiffany's first year in the pep band, and after graduation, she plans to attend college and study horticulture. Tiffany Doucette. Jasmine Edwards, escorted by her parents, William and Bette Edwards. This is her fourth year in the pep band, and she also is a member of the Key Club, Varsity tennis co-captain, co a member of the National Honor Society and in the symphonic band. She plans to attend college to study communications and become an entrepreneur. Anthony Garrison, escorted by his girlfriend, Tiffany Doucette. This is Anthony's fourth year in the pep band. After graduation, he plans to attend Great Oaks for heavy machinery. Anthony Garrison. Kendra Jackson. Escorted by her parents, Marcus and Bev Jackson. This is Kendra's third year in the pep band. She's also vice president of the National Honor Society. She's on the track team and the symphonic band. After graduation, Kendra plans to attend college and major in engineering. Kendra Jackson. Kara Ramsey, escorted by her father and sister, Derek and Raven Ramsey. This is her fourth year in the pep band, and she's also a member of the concert choir, symphonic marching band, and a member of the softball team. She plans to attend college to major in nursing and early childhood development. Kara Ramsey. Jelani Vaughn. Jelani is a senior in the pep band, and she plans to attend Ohio State University. Jelana Vaughn. Let's give all these students a big hand for their contribution to the Winton Woods High School athletic program. There's nothing like a crowd screaming and a band playing, an entire community showing its support. Hi, I'm Chris Spielman. I had a lot of thrills playing football in college and in the pros. But there was just as much excitement playing in high school. Sometimes there are heroes and sometimes there's heartache. But high school football creates memories that will last a lifetime. So please show your support for high school sports where the lessons learned help build the leaders of tomorrow. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. And we're back. Before we get into first half stats, I do want to show you that the shot from Lakota West was in fact released with just a few tenths of a second left on the clock. Let's take another look at this. One more look. Jack Beal, Chase Kaiser, over to Nail, puts up the three as time expires and the play was reviewed and as we mentioned, with just two or three tenths of a second left, the ball left his hand. So thank you to our crew for putting that replay together. And we are back for some second half OHSAA men's varsity basketball action as the Lakota West Firebirds visit the home Winston Woods Warriors. And the third quarter will begin with the Firebirds at a four point deficit, 24 to 20. Each team's with four timeouts left. 
and scoring leaders for Lakota West, we have Devontae Ross with five. Nail Maidi with that three-pointer at the end. Beal with three. Keegan Fish with three. Keon Tillman with two. And the leader for the Winton Woods Warriors is Kwan Watson with five. And with that, we will begin the third quarter. Durham back to number two. Jacob Goins is going to find Boyku. Slip to the middle, down to the big man. Oh, oh great support there. Austin Jones unable to finish the drive. Mitch Weber supporting Jacob Beal there, and the two of them able to prevent anything from dropping. And Lakota West looks to work their offense. That's Mitch Weber again. Up against Austin Jones. Keegan Fish with a great pass Austin down Jones low. Austin Jones goes up for the fake. Mitch Weber wishes he could have that one back as that one took an unfortunate bounce. Yeah. Does Fighting. go for Austin the Austin Jones rebound. with the ball. He's driving two on two. They're gonna call a block on Lakota West. And that's Keegan Fish's first foul. He's looking around like, what did I do? Let's Take check out the replay here. here. Uh, He's moving. He was moving a bit. His arms were flailing a little bit. Yep, feet were moving. I think the ref made a very good call. Always easier to look at on the replay monitor, but I think the ref did make a very good call. Austin Keegan Jones to the line. This first shot's good. Austin Jones is a uh, senior here on a senior night, so this is his last home court game. Here at Winton Woods, he's had a great career here. I'm uh, going to have to correct myself there. Their actual last home game will be at first molar here, but it's very late in the season, so you can catch that game on the 12th of February. But tonight, being senior night, we're going to honor the senior in Austin Jones. And the Cuddle West with a the turnover there out of bounds. Um, not Jacob they were Goins looking for. Passes to Austin Jones. Back to DeBoyku under the rim. He got a whole lot of contact and he made the basket. Great passing there, and that's something. Let's take another have. look at this. He goes under the rim, up. Easy foul call for the officials. Easy. Uh, Easy bucket call for this person. And those, those passes under the basket are something we have not seen from Lakota West. He's allowed to come in. It's a little bit of confusion here as Devontae Ross is attempting to check in. KOD to Boyku. His shot is good. Monte Ross coming in for Chase Kaiser. Three Winton Woods players will remain in the backcourt. Who just checked up his third foul. Monte Ross finding Keegan Fish. Aquaman to Jacob Beal. Elaine Monson picks up the block. Jacob Beal fouled on the floor, no shot. Looks like that foul was on Terry Durham. Looks like that's going to be his second of the game. Devontae Ross finding Jacob Beal, puts Austin up Jones. a three. No good. Austin Jones just got a hand in his face. Jake Beal getting burnt there a little bit, but recovers on defense. Linton Woods looking to make quick points happen. And Austin willing to Jones beat the double teamed underneath the basket, oh. goes up with it, comes down with Looks it. Looks like he might have gotten away with the walk, but keeps possession of the ball and They're gonna didn't get away with that walk. They're going to call him on that one. The makeup call, I do believe. Here's the first one, right? Well, we didn't really see that one, but. Good hustle that by one Austin right there Jones. is also a walk. So yeah, they did actually call a correct walk the, the second time. 
It's been listening to too much pretenders. I would walk, as a proclaimers, I would walk 500 miles, Nick. Well, Austin he just Jones walked twice, walked about, at least. Uh, <laughs> walked about that much on that play. Something close to 500 miles. Number two calling for it, three-point basket, no good. A little too aggressive on the shot, and that would be Fishman on the rebound. Finding Jake Field. This game's going at a fast pace right now. Fishman puts up three, unable to convert, but a lucky rebound. Keon Tillman finding Devontae Ross, puts up the basket, count it. And they needed that. A chance to make a three-point play and uh, get themselves right back into this one. Devontae Ross making a strong move, as we see there, trying to get his team pumped up as the Firebirds still trail by six, but obviously a free throw away from five. Fishman, amongst some others, check out, and Frank Schmidt checking in. The sick Axelis comes in for Austin Jones for the Winton Woods Warriors. Devontae Ross understanding the importance of the situation, unable to convert. Oh, the rebound, almost the two points, but a beautiful rebound there by Jack Wynn. That's Terry Durham with the rebound. Shoulda. He'll hand it off to Jacob Goins, and we'll take it up court. He's double teamed at the middle. He's gonna find Clemain. Clemain back to Jacob Goins. Pressure. Jacob Goins waiting for something to set up. He's got the Boiku. That's number 22 with the backwards shot. <laughs> that didn't have much of a chance Matt by Terry Russell, Durham. Dakota West team looking for a travel there. And Jack, Jacob Beal missing the layup. Both teams playing aggressively as number three goes to the floor. That's Zach Exilis. Lots happening there on that play. Um, ref initially decided a no call as Jack Beal made a spin move to the basket. Excuse me, Jacob Beal, who now checks out for Nail Mighty. Hey, Terry Durham to uh, inbound the ball to number two, Jake. Jacob Goins. Jacob Goins is going to pick up a double team. And another steal. That would be Jack Wynn trying to convert, makes a spin move, and gets fouled. Very strong move. And they're going to call that foul on number two on Winston, or excuse me, Winton Woods. That's going to be Jacob Goins. Jack Wynn making his first and his second to bring Lakota West within four points, 28 to 24, with just four minutes left in the third quarter. And this action is heating up. Frank Schmidt knows it as he just fouled Winton Woods on the far side of the court. Deboiku will inbound the ball for Winton Woods. He's going to find Jacob Goins. Back to, back to Deboiku. Back to Goins. Over to Cormain Watson. Dribbles around the arch. Makes his move inside, puts it up. Mm. Draws a foul from the Lakota West Firebirds. And that was Devontae Ross's second foul. Excuse me, that was his third foul, team's fifth of the half. And due to it being his third foul, he checks out. And Mitch Weber checks in. Lemayne Watson up and in. A lot of the points in this quarter are coming off of uh, penalty shots. The no look pass. pass. Oh, great passing as Lakota West gets the look they wanted. Unfortunately, Mitch was unable to finish the layup, but they got the exact look they wanted. Here's the, another look at that play. Beautiful dish. Weber hacked just enough to prevent the layup. Probably a good foul since the bucket didn't drop. And Mitch Weber shooting two. 
That'll put the Warriors team fouls at uh, four. Nothing but net there. We've got a two possession game. Jacob Beal checking back in for Frank Schmidt. Weber trying to repeat the performance of that first shot. And does, those look very similar. The kid has spent his time at the practice gym. Kumain, Kumain Watson with the ball, and he's gonna pass it up to number 22, Terry Duro. Makes a strong move to the basket. Jacob Beal, Mitch Weber almost on the board. Wayne Watson comes and down with it, but it's gonna be Fouled by number 42. That'd be Mitch Weber's third, and Matt Rooks, the head coach for the Dakota West Firebirds, looking for a charge on the previous play. Did not get the call. Clinton Woods didn't make the basket anyways. If we're going by Monopoly rules, I don't think he's going to get it. No, they rarely, after the fact, make the call simply from the coach yelling. But maybe today will be the start of a new era. Oh, that's just, the boy who is just gonna blow right past the defender. Nail Madi attempting to draw a charge, but ref not having it, and strong move. They're gonna call that penalty on Zach Exilis. And they're calling that a shooting foul. So Dante Jones will be at the line shooting two. Warriors five team fouls. Starting to rack them up real quick in this first uh, third quarter. And banks it in the untraditional way of making a free throw. <laughs> it is a Wednesday. The bank is open. St. Louis Sunday, folks. Rebound by Deboigu. Find Jacob Goins. It's going to look to Kumei Watson. Cut a with a lot of half court pressure here, which leads to a wide open three. Oh. Kevin Austin for the Winton Woods Warriors puts up the three point shot. And Winton Woods breaking out of this. Uh, uh, oh, another oh. turnover. The boy so with the West steal. He's now gonna... in a lot of trouble. Going to take it himself so far. They're going to call it out of bounds on Lakota West. Winton Woods will keep the ball. Duvalte Ross coming in for Chase Kaiser. And the Warriors with an eight point lead now, seemingly out of nowhere. So Lakota West definitely looking for that next basket, understanding the importance of this situation. Boyko goes up with one hand, it goes in, he draws the foul. And count the bucket. Boyko having a great game. Devontae Ross, that might be his fourth foul. Call the travel. So just like that, Chase Kaiser. Checks Ross in. in a bit of trouble. Devontae Ross in foul trouble with four, checks out. Boyku off the glass in the Jacob rim, off the Beal glass, and then the out of the rim. Rebound for the Kittlewest Firebirds. Now need to play with a little bit of urgency as we come to the under two minute mark in the third quarter. And Jacob oh. Beal answers real quick. They've got the Witten Woods Warriors startled. And just like that, the Kittlewest with a little bit of momentum as Jack Wynn is fouled. Look at a West to inbound the ball from the baseline. I believe that is Frank Schmidt finding Jacob Beal, who goes up for another oh. very strong 
one-handed move. That's back-to-back two-point conversions there for Jacob Beal, who brings the Firebirds within six. And Woods wants to slow it down a little bit. Long-range pass. The boy go underneath, and he's going to throw the ball off the Firebirds player and uh, maintain possession. That was Chase Kaiser there on the stifling defense, but unable to get the, the turnover. Coach has got to be happy with that deflection now. Boyku going to make a move underneath. He's got two men on him. No call. Caught the rim. Frank Schmidt thought about a fast break. That was deflected by Winton Wood, so that will not be an over and back as Jacob Beal. Looks to make a strong move, Jermaine but Watson may have turned it over, and the refs are going to signal for a jump ball. So that Lakota West turnover nullified by the possession arrow as they will keep possession. Jacob Beal making one too many moves and dribbles right off the right side of his shoe. The point who comes off court a little gingerly, Austin Jones is going to come in to replace him. Those Nikes have a new scuff mark on them for Jacob Beal, but it's the basketball. Beal at the top of the key. Trying to close to a travel there, but Kameen Watson covers. Finds Dante Jones just in time. Back out to win to Jacob Beal, who tries Austin to dish it Jones. off. Tries to find Jack Wynn, but Winton Woods' white jersey stood in the way there. Jacob Goins with the ball. 20 Push seconds off. left in a quarter. Winton Woods would be completely satisfied going up, going in up by six or more. Austin Jones as they let the clock back. wind down, but take the shot. The three fingers come in the air for Winton Woods. Now it's Frank Schmidt on a fast break. Goes up, unable to finish, out of bounds, and that's going to do it for the third quarter. As Winton Woods ending on a very high note. Winton Wood Warriors 40, Lakota West Firebirds 31. It's Jimmy Love and my partner in crime, Nick Coddell. We'll be back. Before we cut to commercial break, Nick Coddell, I believe you have some announcement to make. Yeah, we are always looking for volunteers here at Waycross Community Media. We need your help on future productions. Please, if you are available, give us a call at 513-825-2429 or visit us online on www.waycross.tv backslash volunteer. Hi, I'm Dustin Fox. Now, I had a lot of thrills playing football in college and in the pros, but none compared to the excitement of playing high school football. I'll never forget the pep rallies, the bus rides, and playing our rivals before a packed house. Now, for most kids, high school will be the last opportunity to play organized sports, but the lessons learned will last a lifetime. So support high school sports, which helps student athletes become the best they can be on and off the field. This message presented by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. Okay, welcome back. Fourth quarter. Warriors up 40 to 31. Control the game for now. Possession arrow favors Winton Woods to start the fourth quarter. Number 20, Kevin Austin will inbound the ball. Jacob Goins. Frank Schmidt on the coverage. Pressure! It's Lumpkin. Frank Schmidt got a hand in Kevin there. Durham fighting, hits the deck hard. But he's quick to get up to recover on defense. Great job defensively by Lakota West there. Frank Schmidt getting in a little trouble on the far baseline. Terry Durham trying to thwart the Firebirds plan. Jacob Beal, both teams definitely playing with a lot more intensity. And Jacob Beal gets the turnover on the five second violation as he was clearly closely guarded for that entire five seconds. So great defensive effort there from Winton Woods to force the turnover and get this quarter started off on a high note. Jacob Goins. Yeah. 
And Witten Woods sensing a bit of trouble there, calling a timeout. That is their second charge timeout. 30 and seconds. It is a 30 second burger. And the Warriors have three timeouts left. Speaking of burgers, Warriors up to 40. And the Lakota West Firebirds sitting at 31. So with seven minutes left in a nine point deficit, I'm sure the coach is eager to make some adjustments. I think we can expect to continue to see some full court pressure. Well, let's not count Lakota West out of this game. We know they can shoot. We've seen them do it. And I uh, look for them to fight their way back into this one. And I do too. They're obviously on a three game losing streak and Winton Woods being on the other end of that with a three game winning streak. But that should just motivate. Oh, oh. That should only serve as motivation for the Dakota West as they clearly need a win. That ball deflected out of bounds by Kevin Austin. The Firebirds ball. And Dante Jones is checking out and Devontae Ross, who has four fouls, checks in for the Lakota West Firebirds. So he will obviously be playing very cautious. Oh, here comes. Terry Durham trying a little bit of the intimidation factor with the Mitch court Weber slot. makes a great strong drive to the basket, gets fouled in the process. That's number 20. It'll be Kevin Austin. And uh, they are considering, first. considering that one a shooting foul. So team seven. Mitch Weber at the line shooting two. And he's been doing that all night. And Coach Galepsi will make some substitutions. The Boyku back in the game along with Kamane Watson. Mitch Weber now the team leader in points for Lakota West with seven. And looking to make that a nice even snowman as he does. So what we were just talking about is Lakota West getting back into this one and that's exactly what they do. Playing that full court, not afraid to. And an offensive foul. Dakota West has been waiting for a call all night, and they finally get one. That's, here's the replay of that one, and I would agree with that. He lowered his shoulder on a guy that was clearly set. Jack Wynn doing a great job drawing that foul. Good eye by the ref. And that's a turnover, and a little bit of momentum shift now as Dakota West looks to cut this deficit by even more. And that's going to be Dante Jones in the backcourt. Inbounding the ball to Jacob Beal. Witten Woods looking confused on defense. And Beal says, you can't guard me, son. Oh, oh, can he, though? But Austin Jones using all six. Oh. Eight. And this game is getting a little bit chippy. Uh, Jack Wynn taking a foul or fouling there, I believe. Let's find out shortly. That was indeed Jack Wynn. Here's the foul, looking at it again. And yeah, he got a little bit of ball and a lot of body. Good call by the officials. It's gonna send number 22, Terry Durham to the line for Winton Woods. He'll be shooting too. His first shot's good. The second shot. It's up and it's good. Maybe Devontae Ross finding Jacob Beal. Going to the boy Beal covering. Beal to Mitch Weber who thought about it, decided to drive. Count the bucket, making an extremely strong move to the hoop. It's gonna be 23 on Wooden Woods. That is Terry Durham, his third. Mitch Weber now hitting double digits. 
10 points after that layup, and it all started from a brilliant pump fake outside the arc. Drove into the lane, saw an opening, took it, was hacked, easy bucket. And the way he's been shooting, it could be an easy three-pointer. Just like that, Dakota West cutting the deficit down to just five with six minutes left. Uh, that's a uh, Frank Schmidt getting outsized under the basket. And a great effort there from Dante Jones. Witten Woods will keep the ball. Witten Woods will maintain possession. Excuse me, it is a six point lead for the Witten Wood Warriors, 42 to 36. But Mitch Weber single handedly taking that double digit down to a manageable number of six points with just six minutes left. So still a sense of urgency, but certainly in this game is Lakota West. And that is a five second violation on the inbound pass. So again, momentum favoring Lakota West. And just like that, we're gonna see Lakota West's big come in, Devontae Ross. Four fouls, inbounding it to Jacob Beal. So Ross clearly being used on the offensive end and being spared on defense. Mitch Weber, can he continue oh, his dominance? Wow. Yes, he can. Mitchell Weber. Cut it down to four points. Got ourselves a game here. The six, five, weight 160 junior, but just like that. Looks like number 22 will go down and draw the foul. It's Terry Jones. And oh, that would be... That is a huge foul pickup. So speaking of Mitch Weber, that's his fourth. So it's been all, it's been all him on offense. Terry Durham unable to make his first shot. Coach is going to leave him in as he checks in Jack Wynn and Chase Kaiser checks out. So just a four-point game. That miss certainly helping keep this game as close as it is. Terry Durham's second shot is no good. Jack Wynn with the board. Kind of makes the foul worth Frank it. Frank Schmidt. Yeah, good foul, but, you know, definitely something to keep an eye on. Two of the bigs for Lakota West, each sitting with four fouls. Let's see if Lakota West can keep their momentum. Jacob Beal almost oh. turning the ball over. Jack Wynn keeping possession. Remaining composed, finds Frank Schmidt out by the top of the key. And is that oh. Jacob Beal almost oh, finishing it? Oh, blocked by Austin <laughs> Jones. Jack Wynn absolutely stuffed by Jones. And a turnover. It's going to be Terry Durham to the basket. Very no fortunate good. that Lakota Jacob West recovers. Very fortunate Jacob Beal was able to intercept that shot attempt without actually drawing a foul. So excellent defense, re defensive recovery for Lakota West. And I believe that was Lakota West calling their second charge timeout. Each team with three remaining. As we look at a 42-38 score with just five minutes left. So this suddenly has turned into a very exciting ball game. What do you think Lakota West is drawing up right now? If we can get a slightly different camera angle, we might be able to get a peek at it. Looks like some X's and O's are moving around over there. Yeah, X's and O's, most certainly. Uh, what they're doing, I don't really know. Getting a close look at the back of Cameron Anzer there on the camera. Exciting news for those Bearcat fans. They're up 67-51 with just a minute left in the second half of that game. So those of you following the local college basketball teams are probably happy to hear that. But meanwhile, we are back at a very close one here at the Winton Wood Warriors Auditorium. Devontae Ross at inbound pass from the baseline. Both teams with nine fouls. Keep that number in mind, double bonus for both teams on the next non-offensive foul. Frank Schmidt getting a little sloppy. Finds Jacob Beal who drives, dishes. He's gonna take shots it. Shots up. Brilliant board from Wynn. 
and he slows it down as he finds Jacob Beal. Jacob Beal puts up a three short off the front of the rim. Firebirds bench ready to celebrate. And Jack Wynn goes up, not fouled off Frank Schmidt, Wittenwood's ball. Jack Wynn making plays happen, not always finishing them, but certainly providing a spark off the bench. And Dante Jones and Keon Tillman check in as Devontae Ross checks out and as does Mitch Weber. So the bigs are checking out for defense as they hope to get back on the court on offense. Uh, obviously in foul trouble, that's a very strategic play. Jacob Goins down to Kamein Johnson, or excuse me, Kamein Watson. Gonna find Deboiku, oh, who takes a step right onto the fire. Yeah, yeah that was a very dangerous situation there as Jacob Beal was lying on the ground. Lots of opportunities for twisted ankles and everything else, but disaster averted. And Firebirds are able to recover and remain their four-point deficit. Beal to Schmidt, back to Beal. In and it's gonna be a timeout. Lakota West, as unsurprisingly, Mitch Weber and Devontae Ross checking back in with the Firebirds back on offense. And that would be a timeout charge for Lakota West. That's their third timeout. They have two remaining as we stare at a very similar score as we were just a few minutes ago 42 38. Dakota West down four with four to go. But it seemed like it was just a few minutes ago where they were down 10 with seven to go. So it's certainly been a great attempt here by Lakota West, and we'll see if they can finish this off. Winton Woods Warriors, the home team, trying to feed off this crowd energy as the cheerleaders are cheering. The crowd is buzzing. Soda and popcorn is flowing. Just a great day here at the auditorium at Winton Woods High School. Frank Schmidt in the backcourt. <laughs> Frank Schmidt with a beautiful dish to Mitch Weber, who didn't go up right away, oh! but makes the finish. <laughs> Mitch Weber. We've got ourselves a two-point game here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having hard keeping track of his points. Is that, I believe that's 13 now for Mitch. And a, he got a little bit of a hand in there, but Jake, Jacob might have gotten away with the foul. Didn't get away with that one. Miles Austin that goes up. Frank. Well, I'm sorry, that was Jack Wynn on the foul. Like I said, Jacob Beal may have gotten away with one, but no call. And they certainly saw the second one. Wynn Woods at the line, shooting two. Austin Jones, the lefty, puts it up and in. Every possession, every play, every point certainly magnified as we are under the four minute mark in the fourth quarter. Oh, great response there after Mitch Weber puts up that two. A beautiful response to get that two right back on the board for Wynn Woods. Frank Schmidt in the backcourt. Surprised we haven't seen much of the fish man this half. Mitch Weber back to Frank Schmidt, puts up a three. Ooh. No good. And, and Woods comes down with the ball. Uh, has it. Jump ball called. So very good defensive effort trying to get that board. Let's say a replay of that. Schmidt just off the back. And I think they both came down with it. So probably a good jump ball call. Possession arrow in favor of the Firebirds. And there's Jacob Beal. A little Ooh. long again. And Strategy's this time, clearly to be putting up threes at this point. Yep. Especially when they're wide open looks like that, which they really didn't have the entire first half. That would be a foul on Jack Wynn. I believe that's his second. And That'll send Terry Durham to the line. Really not a really not a bad foul. Um, being double bonus. Arguably a bad foul, but they do need to play very tight defense. So, um, yeah, a little bit of confusion there. It is double bonus, so he's shooting two. Devontae Jones and Mitch Weber as the bigs trying to get this board. If we see another rim out, 
with that first one missing, that foul is looking smarter. Second one, it's a great roll off the rim. So five point lead. Dakota West comeback kids trying to make something happen. Mitch Weber Ooh, off the glass and into the hands of number 22, Terry Durham. Who is hacked hard He's and he hit. is down and hurting. He hit the wall with a lot of speed. And that would be, I believe that's gonna be Jack Wynn on the foul. I think that's his third. Here, let's see a replay of that. Hacked hard and sent into the wall. That did not look pretty. He did come up though Looks under like his own he's power. Be all right. So we're glad to see that. And uh, yep, the ref's not eager to immediately get Witten Woods at the line. There's uh, you know a little bit of animosity after that foul, so calming everybody down. Everyone seems to have their nerves. I don't think it was a foul with bad intentions from Jack Wynn. It just looked a little bit harder than it ended up being. So, Quentin Woods the line shooting two. Perry Durham's first shot is good. That'll set a six point deficit as we go into uh, just under three minutes left in this game. Niall Mighty. Checking in. Obviously, he hit that three pointer at the end of the first half. Terry Durham's second shot is off the board. It's a big miss. Keeps it a two possession game. Fireworks trailing six with 2.40 to go. Mitch Weber puts it up. Ooh, just and cool. over the back, I believe. And I think that is a good call. You're going to see it again here. That's yeah, that's all arm and no doubt about it. It's Terry Durham, number 22, with the so, foul. So Devontae Ross with a chance to get this game back to a four-point deficit. If that is Terry Durham, I believe he has four now. Clutch, clutch free throw from Devontae. Keon Tillman checking in. Jack Wynn checking out. Chase Kaiser checking in. Mitch Weber checking out. So again, getting those uh, four foul bigs out of here. Obviously you can't take out Devontae Ross because he's at the line. Looks like Terry Durham, uh, the one who committed the foul, ended up jamming a finger or something. He's getting taped up on the sideline right now. Well, hopefully we get to see him in the last two and a half minutes. Hoping to come back in even though he's got four fouls. And all right, when Woods recovers, recovers, that's uh, Jacob Goins. A big miss as Dakota West now stares at a five point deficit. Obviously, you need to play some very tight D. Austin Jones trying to put the game away, not Mark. able to. He gives the ball right back to Lakota West. That was probably a shorter possession than their coach would have liked, but. Uh, Start with Lakota West to make a move right here. It's now or never. There's Jacob Beal. Thought about it, thought about driving. Decides to slow it down. Tillman puts it up. Oh! Number okay. 23, Niall Maidi, putting up a huge three to get this to a two-point game with just two minutes left. That's Clemaine Watson with the ball. He's gonna find Jacob Goins at the top of the key. It turns the ball over oh. to Devontae Ross. Lakota West is really trying to win this game. And it's now or he never. the play. He's found what he likes. Well, Lane Watson. And all Coming. of a sudden, the gym is quiet, minus the cheering Lakota West bench coaches and cheerleaders. And that would be, oh, here's a replay of that huge clutch three-pointer. Broke the his, fake. broke the Winton Woods ankles. The fake. And didn't hit much rim there. That's a great looking shot. And uh, clearly that is a guy that was checked into the game intentionally just about a minute ago because of his three-point shooting skills. So looking on uh, Coach Galipsy trying to draw uh, what he wants to do defensively against these uh, surging Lakota West Firebirds. 
And with how close we are to Lakota West Bench, you know, maybe we could just tell them what they're doing. Well, there it is. Um, well, yeah, we, we could actually. Um, <laughs> that's kind of where ethics and morals <laughs> come into play. And I just, I don't have too much uh, stake in this game, so I'm going to let the coaches decide the, the outcome of this game rather than interfering. How do you feel about that? Uh, you're a better man than I. <laughs> Again, just stressing the urgency of the situation. We are in a very exciting game. Wynton Woods Warriors at 46 at home in front of a raucous crowd. Lakota West Firebirds with 44 and the ball with just a minute 30 left. So, and this is a game that Lakota West came out in the first quarter, went up quick, but Wynton Woods has. I believe they were up 11 to three at one point. They fought their way back into the game and took the lead and had uh, control of the game for so long. And now Watch Lakota West is coming back in the late of the fourth quarter, trying to get the lead to win this game. And this possession just absolutely huge. Jacob Beal drives, foul, makes a very strong move. Defender decides not to hold his ground. May have been able to draw a charge if he did. Instead, kind of backed off a little bit and gets picked up for the block. Hey, wait until we see what he does. Ooh, Beal, unable, unable to convert the first free throw. Feeling some of the pressure. Terry Durham checks back into the game for number 20. I think all those big heads in the crowd behind the backboard shaking their signs or getting his head a little bit. What do you think? Well, I'm not sure about that, but... Uh, <laughs> All right, there's a view. There's no big heads back there. <laughs> We're caught lying. Someone's going to catch a cold because this guy's veins are ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lakota West making the proper substitutions to get Devontae Ross and Mitch Weber out there, out of the game, excuse me, with four fouls. And we're at a one-point game. Lakota West obviously needs to play a lot of tight defense, but not needing to foul. Main Watts is going to take it all the way himself, and they're going to draw the block on Lakota West. And that would be number 12. That's Jacob Beal. I believe that is his third foul. Here we see it again, slowed down. And yeah, kind of leans into that one a little bit. Hard to hard to really tell. Well, I think it could have gone either way. Hey, I think so change. too. But uh, Look, but we got a one-point game here with a minute left. Look for Mitch. Barring. Uh, these points going in. Weber and Ross waiting at the scorer's table, trying to get back in on offense. Obviously, this next Lakota West possession even more important than that last one. And Kameen Johnson is able to hold on to their lead. Uh, Speaking of ice in the veins, that would be it right there. That did not hit much at all. Winton Woods trying to get up to a three-point lead, which would certainly be comforting for their coach on the sideline. Both of these teams showing poise late in this game. Uh, uh, important miss, though, as Devontae Ross comes down with the board and it's back to a two-point lead, so each team trades free throws as we approach the one-minute mark. Dakota West could go up here on this play. We have reached 53 seconds left in the game. And Lakota West decides, now or never, well, let's use our final timeout. Well, if nothing else, this game has been extremely entertaining. Uh, Lakota West has fought hard to try to get back into this one, and both teams have had to face situations that they were down and had to fight back, and right now we were watching a very good effort from Lakota West to do just that. Some very talented athletes on this Witten Woods varsity cheerleading squad. Getting the crowd pumped up because they are looking for a big defensive stand from the Witten Woods Warriors. It's worth mentioning, um, Lakota West has none of their timeouts left. Yep, this is the uh, this is their last one. Witten Woods with three. So certainly if Lakota West makes a layup, any kind of two-point or three-point basket, you're going to see Winton Woods burn one of theirs as they set up a play of their own. Dakota West, I would not be surprised if they don't waste too much time on this opportunity. 
Uh, if they do miss, they're going to want to be quick to foul. So again, just lots of strategy here. Players have all been in these situations before. They know what to do. Now it's just time to execute. Let's see what kind of play Lakota West drew up. Let's see what kind of defense Winton Wood settles into. It's going to be Jack Wynn on the inbound pass as he finds Don, as he finds Nayol Nadi. That's Mitch Weber. Back to Jack Wynn. Jacob Beal slowing things down, but can't slow things down too much as we approach the 35 second mark. Coach is trying to tell their kids to hurry up a little bit. Play with some urgency. Weber drives, can't finish. Oh, Austin Jones is going to go. Weber on. stuffed. Devontae Jones with the rebound. Foul, and it's a, oh, they're calling a jump ball. They're calling a jump ball. And that was a big play. Lots of action. I'm looking forward to seeing this replay. Look at Mitch Weber drive, put a little too much muscle on it. Jacob Beal comes in for the board. It ends up coming right back to Weber, who gets completely stuffed. Devontae Jones goes up, and that's where the ref said it was a jump ball. So the ball was grabbed midair, and Jones came back down with it. So lots happened there. And the end result was a very, very important possession arrow, which will give Witten Woods the ball. I'm imagining Lakota West is planning to foul here. I would say that that would be a good strategy. Obviously, a turnover on the inbound pass would be ideal, but Witten Woods drawing up a play to prevent just that. And they're going to try and get the balls, ball in the hands of. I believe it was Kevin Austin. All right, we're going to take a look at this replay one more time during this timeout. That's Mitch Weber. Ugh. Jacob Beal coming in. Devontae Jones. Mitch Weber with a beautiful stuff there from Austin, Austin Jones. Jones. And Austin Jones still in the play. Ends up being a... Uh, part of the play that ended up tying it up. And obviously, coach signaling, uh, Linton Woods, Warriors coach signaling, we have two timeouts to burn. If you can't get it in bounds, whatever you do, do not get a five second violation in the backcourt, so. The inbounds? What's the call? And prior to the official call on the near side of the court, Far side official gives Witten Woods the timeout. So let's do it again. Coach and players were well aware of the timeouts available to him and were very willing to use them. Dakota West pressuring though, you know, uh, giving it a good effort. Yeah. The refs are going to be looking for a foul right away. So could certainly play to their Lakota West advantage if they do foul, but. If they go for a turnover and the ref is quick on his whistle for the foul, it could, could end up punishing him. So we'll see. This inbound pass certainly means a lot for both teams and the outcome of this game. As you see, Winton Woods has one timeout remaining, so still a little bit of cushion there if they need it. Hitting Woods uh, gets to the floors. Dakota West also does. We're going to finish this one out in an exciting fashion. Uh, clock is showing zero, but it is actually 20. So I believe uh, Coach Galepsi of Winton Woods is trying to get it sorted out with the uh, controller. Yep, I believe the exact time got is 20.7. So they got that back correct. Scores table, no longer confused. Broadcasters, no longer confused. We're ready to go. Winton Woods with the ball on the inbound pass. And Jacob Beal, I believe, just picked up his fourth foul, a hold. Wow. 
Well, it saves time on the clock, but it still sends it to the line. And a very big miss. So Lakota West is going to have a chance if this goes in to come down and tie it. And not surprising, Ross and Weber right back out there. Been seeing that most of the quarter. It's a photo finish here. We'll see what happens here. This may decide a lot about this game. And, and it's good. Clutch make. Clutch make. Dakota West so needs Dakota three West. points with 20 seconds to go in the game. Well aware of the situation they're in. No timeouts. They either need a quick two. Oh, no. And they turn the ball over. That goes out of bounds. Linton Woods, last touch. So. Oh, Lakota West will keep the ball. Lakota West will keep the ball. And that is Jack Wynn in inbounding to Jacob Beal, who has 10 seconds. The two-point play is now pretty much out. And they're looking for a three from somebody. Uh, looks like it was on the floor. I don't know how, how they're calling it. You know, see it so again. Very, here. very important foul call right there. It was Still a foul. On the floor, yeah. And the officials are saying it was on the floor. So Weber is going to have to go. At, he has two free throws. They're in the double bonus, but uh, clearly and the crowd the getting into this one here. Three there, three free throws. But Weber clutch makes the first. 4.7 seconds left in the clock. Still lots of time. Now has a second. <laughs> lots of time in high school basketball. Most other sports would not consider 4.7 seconds very long, but. Again, situations that both teams have been in, both coaches knowing what to do, what to instruct their players. Lots of... Uh... Okay, Weber makes them both. Dante Jones checking in, Weber checking out. And Winton Woods calling the timeout, up by one. 47 for the Lakota West Firebirds, 48 for the Winton Woods Warriors. So doesn't get much better than this. Does not. I would not be surprised if Lakota West goes for um, a very similar strategy as last time and maybe fouls on a hold or something before the ball is even inbounded. Can't make it too, uh, too brutal or else, of course, you're potentially looking at an intentional or flagrant foul. But those 4.7 seconds are very valuable. Well, the home team, Winton Woods, will try to hold on on senior night. And just really quick, let's just honor the seniors. Austin Jones. Jeff Savage and Kevin Austin. Congratulations, guys. And these, they will try to finish this one out with a one point lead with 4.7 seconds left in the game. Winton Woods the on the inbound pass, and that takes off about one second off the clock from 4.7 to 3.7. So they got the ball in to uh, Blakeu, he'll be the one to take the shots. He's been great all night. I expect him to make at least one of these. Frank Schmidt on the foul, that's his third, but at this point, fouls are fairly irrelevant. Uh, and of course, overtime is a is a possibility, so they could come into play. And a very clutch free throw from Deboiku. Deboiku, very clutch, and Lakota West bringing in some of their bigs, making sure they either get this rebound or get a very very quick shot off. Very important free throw. It all comes down to this. Oh, makes them both. They can only tie. Oh, we have a whistle before the buzzer. Foul on the floor. That would be a. We're going to reset the clock. Winton Woods what? with a very smart foul there. 
as they foul on the floor and with a three-point lead, these two free throws from Lakota West will make it very difficult to come back. Let's see how much time is left. A little bit of confusion at the scorer's table. One of the officials trying to talk him into. Lakota West lobbying for more time on the shot clock. Lots of confusion at the scorer's table. Based on our feed, we're saying about two and a half seconds should be left. Um, we'll uh, um, leave it to we these officials to get there. Is there a time. chance of a replay? Maybe we can help assist these officials. So we'll see if we can get a replay as the uh, scorer's table works things out. It looks like they're settling on 1.3. So I think that's the official ruling there. And no doubt about it, it's, it's oh. crunch time for Lakota West. Make the first, miss the second, put the way up in. That's that's certainly uh, one of the better strategies, actually. Oh, but you had to make the first. Pretty much had to make that first one, so. I'd just chuck it up off the glass. Try and get a quick three-pointer. <laughs> <laughs> See who comes down with it. So, find a miraculous play here. Yep, and that's exactly what they do. They're going to call that. And this is ball game, folks. A very, very exciting game at the Winton Woods Warriors Stadium here at Winton Woods High School. Final score, Lakota West Firebirds 47 and your Winton Woods Warriors 50. Congratulations to all the Winton Warriors and those seniors. Like I said, Austin Jones, Jess Savage, Terry Durham. I'm Jimmy Love. This is my partner in crime, Nick Caudill. We're from the Waycross Community Media champions and we are excited to have you here with us tonight. of this program are available for $20 each. Send program title along with your address and check or money order to Waycross Community Media. Attention dub coordinator, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio 45240. Or buy securely on the web at www.waycross.tv.